things that we use it for. But not so much for waking up to, you know, like they show in the advertisement. So, when do you use it most? I don't know if there's any particular... I suppose it would be when we all come home and we're there prior to dinner. And then in the evening, almost every evening, I'm asking for my newsflash. Mm -hmm. Because... It's something I do when I lie on my stomach to help my back, you know, and it's just kind of my regular routine is to listen to six or eight technical podcasts um, and newscasts that I hear. So I get. Mm -hmm. So do all your, do all the people in your family interact with these devices? Yes, they do to different degrees. Okay. Um, so again, if it's my granddaughter, she would only inter interact with a, one of us adults or with her brother. Um, if, if it's just me, I would interact with it quite a bit differently than the rest of the household because I'm testing out things and mm -hmm. trying the latest, you know, if then that or, you know, what have you with the system. Um, I'm always, as soon as I hear that it can make phone calls, you know, I'm on it. I'm testing it out, and I'm seeing how well does this make a good phone call. And then I call all my friends, you know, and try it and make sure they know that it's working that way. And then I try the drop-in feature, which is one of the latest that allows me to connect automatically if you set it up so that somebody can do that. And what did I do? I, told, I did, took my mom's Echo, set it up so I could connect to it, without her saying a thing at any moment. Mm -hmm. And so I can drop in on her now. Um, of course, I would argue it's not the greatest telephone. You know, it's not meant to be. And it is half duplex, meaning when I'm speaking, I can't hear the other person and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I kind of knew that that's how it would have to work. And I'm used to that through ham radio, this half duplex, you know. But, you know, most people think a telephone, you can hear and talk at the same time. Well, the Echo's not going to do that and do it well. So I understand why it's not the best telephone, but it still works surprisingly well. So uh, will the, the parents of the, your grandkids also use them? Yes, and she actually bought my second Echo oh. and took it to her house and now uses it. In fact... When she's away, her 12-year-old grandson, that's his way to make contact with us or to call her when she's out driving. She's an Uber driver. So she drives for Uber and leaves the kid and the younger one, which is legal, but leaves them alone while she's out driving. But they at least have a communication device to get a hold of us or her. Um, and, and the Echo is one of those devices. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, where did we go? <laughs> Cover a lot, right? <laughs> yes. We reached data, I think. Um, so how does it fit in your room? I mean, where does it live? <laughs> where does it live? <laughs> well, you know, the tap is smaller than the big Echo. But the tap I put over kind of off to the side, like on my um, nightstand, off to the side. And it's not that much in the way, really. It's, it's visible, but kind of, kind of a little hidden, too. Um, I don't put it as close as I would, like, an alarm clock, which I do use, but I don't really use the alarm clock for waking up. I use the alarm clock for playing white noise. And I don't know about you, I love hearing white noise when I go oh, to sleep. Maybe something like a Velvet Underground? Some, well, uh, yeah, maybe, but fans? but really it's just a white noise. Uh, yeah, it helps I drown know. out the background noises. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people, they want it crystal quiet. Mm -hmm. Just don't hear anything. I find that almost distracting when I go to sleep, or at least right when I'm going to sleep. I'd rather hear, not music, because that's usually too upbeat, too much rhythm, you know, but I want white noise or pink noise or brown noise. They all do a really good job of 
drowning out any little pin drops that you might hear, but give you a, your brain something to focus on. And they've been doing research on that too and finding that pink noise is actually helping elderly to do a better brain processes throughout the day even though they use it at night and I find that remarkable but at any rate um so so I have an alarm clock that plays white noise but I don't use it for alarms my alarms I can set it on the tap but usually I don't even bother on the tap I usually just use it on my cell phone which is also over by the echo tap in my bedroom now, downstairs in the living room, it's right on the main, kind of not the coffee table in the middle, but off to the side, kind of like a nightstand to your, to your chair. And that's where it sits, kind of where the light and lamp is. Um, I also do occasionally use the remote control with it. And when I bought the original Echo, um, it came with that. Then they got rid of giving you the remote with it to save some money. So that is nice. Um, where do I put the wand? Well, you put it on your fridge. <laughs> it comes with a little magnetic thing and the magnetic background, so you just slap it right on your refrigerator, and that's exactly where they wanted you to put it, because then they want you to scan stuff in your fridge that you want to reorder, or in your cupboard, okay? So they all have a fixed place to Yes, stay. and my dot goes into the kitchen, um, not on the kitchen table, but off to the side, kind of where we have a bunch of wine and stuff, and it and it has the plug-in spot, and it was perfect because if you're in the kitchen, either making something or you're at the dinner table, you could actually ask it a question. And I changed its name too because if you say Alexa too loud, it would also start the one in the in the living room around the corner. Oh. So I made it computer. So the one in the kitchen is called computer. The one in the living room is oh, Alexa. This is a question we'll be discussing okay, we'll later. Get to it. Yes. Um, so have you ever used your uh, device to search for information or to buy a product or service? You know, I only bought a product because they said to buy this, I think the wand. You, one of them I thought you had to buy using the system in order to reap the benefit that they were giving uh -huh. I choose in most cases not to use it for purchasing anything I don't like to visually just make a purchase I shouldn't say visually in an auditory way just make a purchase mm -hmm. I use it for making lists of things that I want to either research or purchase maybe but I don't use it for purchasing okay um, what did you? What was your other question to that? Because it was too full mm, for making a purchase. You have okay. Already answered this question. Okay. Uh, so how might you use it for searching for a product oh. or a service? Yeah, I, I don't use it to search for a product as much as I use it for searching for a business. Mm -hmm. um, and Google Home is really good for this because Google's database is just gigantic. Wow. So I might say, oh, what's the name of that company? Oh, yeah, Sheer Impressions. And then it'll say, Sheer Impressions in Urbana, Illinois? Yes, that's it. Oh, would you like the number? Or, you know, call it. And quite often, um, I'll just want the number or to know, yeah, that was the name of the place that cuts my hair or whatever. So, um, and, I, and I think it's useful... Um, to especially for weather I mean the stuff that changes all the time so we do use it a lot for the weather I think if we looked at our history we'd see that almost every day either my wife or I have asked it what what's the weather like outside okay um, but yeah not so much for looking up and researching products and stuff more services if I want products, that's where I'm going to pull out my tablet or a computer, and I want to see the visuals along with reading a lot of stuff. I don't even really ever, I've never used it to have it read a book to me. My stepdaughter does with her son. They set it up where it'll read audible books to him. And that's wonderful, but I just choose, I just haven't done that in, in my house. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you, you just don't even imagine the device can help you for search for a product? Well, it's not so much that I don't imagine, but I just don't care to use mm -hmm. it for that purpose. To me, not as important as, as doing all the other things, like looking up services, telephone numbers, looking up um, information about just general stuff, like movies and so forth. Or, um, you know, I mean, I have it read to me podcasts, but really um, I want to initiate what it is that I'm looking for and not have it... Um, yeah, not for not for goods, uh, not for purchasing products, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not at all. So, oh, <laughs> it's hard to ask this question. Is mm -hmm. what role would or should advertising play on the device? What do you think? Well, to me, I don't want any of it. <laughs> you know, I, oh, in okay. all fairness, I, okay, I I, in all fairness, remember I told you my love of the technology was because I wanted something I could bark out commands to it verbally mm -hmm. and have it do something for me. So I kind of wanted it more as a personal assistant. I don't want it as an advertising device. Don't we get enough of that on our phones, on our apps that we download, on our computers that when I'm looking at my Google Mail, I get bombarded with ads. The last thing I want Echo to do is say, by the way, we see you like blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't you be interested in this? <laughs> no, I don't want you to ever say that to me, you know. So what role? I want zero. I realize it might have to have a percent that's there because that drives, if they want to say innovation or future innovations, but in all fairness, ugh, yeah, no. Well, that's business. <laughs> that is business, yeah. no question about it. Um, uh, let's just talk about personality. And uh, what words come to your mind when you think about these kinds of devices? I think, well, why don't I say it this way? Personality for a personal assistant is important. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's really there yet. I don't find that my Google Home or Amazon Echo have distinct, unique personalities. But they do have a tonal inflection that I think is very important. If it only sounded like this, it would be, you know, in real monotone. It would be horrendous. We do tend to, and, and I've done a lot of research on this myself personally, is, well, on interfaces. And that an interface that you are communicating with that seems more natural like it is an actual human, the more we're going to find it useful. We'll even rate it higher as a satisfying type of interface. Yes. yes. So, I mean, in that sense, I realize it's important and I want the ability to maybe even change it if I could. Now, I think on Google Home I can change the voice, but I don't think the Echo voice allows me to change the female voice, does it? It might now, I don't know. but. It would be great for the user to be able to control that because they might find one voice is better than the other. I'll give you an example. My mom was amazed that my GPS not only, you know, showed the travel directions, and this was five, ten years ago, but it would actually speak to us, like, turn left at the, you know. And then not only did that, I said, well, yeah, but, you know, who do you like? I mean, do you want to hear... Um, Clint Eastwood give us directions? You can do that? I said, sure. So I changed the voice to Clint Eastwood, which I had loaded. And now Clint Eastwood says, turn left at the, you know. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's really Clint Eastwood talking, you know. That kind of a personalization, I think, is pretty valuable. So for me to say it doesn't matter that much to me, okay, that may be the case for me. But I think for the masses, it's very important that these personal assistants or music boxes or whatever you want to call them, if you're going to interact with it, it should have some sort of a humanizing type of, of 
voice and or way it interacts. Now, one thing I will tell you is the Google Home does a better job of contextualizing speech. In other words, if I say, how's the weather looking like outside? And then it comes back and gives me the weather. Okay, but is it going to rain? If I said that to the Amazon Echo, it's like I don't understand, you know, well, it would understand rain, but that's probably a bad example. But because I had just been discussing with the Google Home, the weather, and then I said, but what is it going to rain? It knows enough to keep that in the context of the last question and continue on with mm -hmm. almost like a conversation. Yeah. The more we can get that real, almost like a human conversation, the more humanizing I think it'll be, and hence a further personality. Now, one of the things I find amazing is you can do fun things with these. Like, where are we? <laughs> well, we're on a little planet in the middle, you know. Mm -hmm. And they have some cute responses, and I think oh, that is yeah. so powerful that these devices are doing that because they've really kind of thought through what kinds of silly questions are humans going to ask. How old are you? Well, it knows how old you are. Or, I mean, it, I'm sorry, it doesn't know. It comes back with a response mm -hmm. of how old it is. I was born and blah, 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 right? Um, if you ask it again, it might even change it up a little bit, which again adds a little dimension to that personality. So I think we, we can't say enough about how critical is this. It's super critical, um, but yet for a technique, technical nerd like me, maybe not so much. You know, engineers, we, we don't have to give them much to really satisfy, like we've taught engineers online for years or, or we'll even put them in a room and give them a tape and say, here, play that and you'll learn, right? And they'll do it. And engineers could care less. But you don't do that with an art major or somebody else. They want the human interaction. Mm -hmm. So everybody's gonna be a little different on how they relate to this piece of technology and how that personalization or 